Hi, so in this video tutorial, what I want to show you is how easy it is to take uh, one of the greatest feature of Facebook, which are Facebook lead um, ads, and send these leads directly to MailChimp. So if you don't know what the lead ad is in Facebook, uh, essentially it's, it's, I'm trying to show an example here. It's right from Facebook, you can click the ad and you submit a Facebook form so you never leave Facebook to inquire or you know it's 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 any form you want to have with the fields you want to have so people don't leave facebook and their information is pre-filled so it's very effective because people barely have to do anything they only click um now the way it works though in the back end is that these leads accumulate in your facebook account in your facebook uh, ad account and you need to download them manually via a csv file and this could be kind of annoying in the long term because you always have to download re-upload them in your crm kind of manage you know which <laughs> which leads i did download which one i did upload anyway so it becomes kind of annoying so the way to avoid that is to connect facebook directly with a CRM of yours. In our case, it's gonna be MailChimp. Uh, MailChimp is not full CRM, it's more kind of a broadcast sending email, but we use it for uh, campaigns and anything like that. So if, if people, let's say, subscribe for an uh, ebook, you wanna send them like an automated email in MailChimp to receive their ebook or some, some, something of a sort. Uh, so I assume in this video, you have knowledge about Facebook um, Ad Manager, you have knowledge about MailChimp, so these platform you know about. So I'm not going to cover like the details of those two platforms. So how can you link the two together? So if you don't know, there's a, there's a company called Zapier and that company, what it does, it allows to connect multiple services together and do different actions. So it can connect different services like MailChimp and Facebook, or it could even connect like CRM, like HubSpot with Facebook, etc. It's very versatile. So there's lots of options. All right. So here's what I'm going to do is in this video, I'm going to connect to um, to Zapier. So if you don't, if you don't have an account, go sign up for an account. There's a free version of it. Um, if it, and, and the free version allows you to process like a hundred leads per month. If you need more, you'll have to pay obviously, but I think it's totally worth the cost because you avoid doing any manual work where if you think about your hourly rate, then it's, it's much better to pay for Zapier than, you know, spend your time doing this manually. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to log in Zapier to start with. Okay, once I'm in Zapier, what I'm gonna do is create a new Zap. They call this Zap, which is basically a process of taking one, um, one, one, one app like Facebook and sending it to another process. It could be different things. They have a lot of options. So we're gonna keep it simple today. Um, we're gonna cre click Create Zap. And uh, we're gonna come to this window. And I, I really like to name mine Zap right away. So I'm gonna say Facebook uh, lead add to MailChimp. You can be more precise than that here. I'm just giving you an example, but you can be more like, what is the Facebook ad specifically? What is the MailChimp list, audience, etc. So we're going to find the uh, app event. So what's going to be the trigger of the event? It's going to be the Facebook lead ad. So face, let's type in Facebook and you can see Facebook lead ad. So we're going to click on that. And I think this requires premium uh, a premium account of Zapier, which is $25 per month, but it's totally worth the cost. I really recommend purchasing a subscription. So the trigger event, we're gonna click on that Facebook link and we're gonna click um, a new lead has been submitted. Okay, so that means they fill out the form. We'll continue, then we'll choose the account. So I already connected my account. If you haven't add, you will need to click uh, connect your account. It will ask Zapier to authenticate with uh, Facebook and you'll need to choose as well the, the Facebook page. Um, so I'm gonna choose the account I already connect here, which is my name and I'll click continue. And now I need to set up a trigger. So I need to check wh which page is it. So you need to have also rights on your uh, Facebook page because the ads are related to a page. So in our case, it's gonna be Graph and Solution. Uh, so I'm going to type in Graph and Solution here, and I'm going to select the form. So I assume here you have created the ad already in Facebook. So as you can see, I created like a test lead ad here, uh, and this is kind of a uh, lead uh, testing uh, form. So if I edit the um, basically the ad, sorry. 
here you can see it's a uh, Facebook ad here and it linked to my instant form, which is a test form. And in this form, I'm only asking for uh, email and name. Okay, so we're going to go back to Zapier. We're going to select this test form right there. Okay, we're going to click continue. And we're going to test the trigger. Why we want to do that, we just want to make sure everything is connected correctly. So click test and it will generate like a fake lead from Facebook. As you can see, the email is test at facebook.com. So that's good. So this will allow us to test the Zapier later down the road. Perfect. So now we want to connect with MailChimp. So that's the time we select MailChimp here. And then we will choose an event. So the event will be to add or update a subscript subscriber in our case, but there's lots of other options as you can see, right? So we're just going to keep it simple. Add and update subscriber, click continue. We're going to choose an account. If you haven't connected your account already, you'll need to do the same thing as you did with Facebook. Authenticate. So you let basically Zapier connect to your account and view the, the list, the audience, lots of permission. And these permissions, obviously, you can you can remove them down the road if you're not using Zapier anymore. You go to your MailChimp account and there's a setting where you can disconnect some app. So I'm going to click here. That's our uh, MailChimp account. I'm going to click Continue. And then I need to choose an audience. So I'm going to type in GraphM. Uh, request site analysis. That's an example. It's one form we add. Now, what you want to do is set up the email here. That's very important. That's probably the most important field. So you're going to click on it and allow you to pick up an option from the test lead we did. So that's why the test lead is very important. So you want to click on this. Um, so that's going to be taking the email fields from the Facebook lead, basically. In our case, in our test, is the test at, at Facebook.com. But any new lead will come. That's going to be their email. It's going to set up as the subscriber email, ailment chimp. Um, double opt-in, in my case, I will say no, uh, because they already opt-in on the form, and it's fine. Double opt-in would mean they would, it would, it would receive an email to um, authorize MailChimp to send further email uh, so that they can be on your list. I would say yes on update existing. So if they already exist on the form, on the audience, I want to update anyway. So with, let's say a tag, and I'm not gonna bother with groups here, but if you have groups, you can select it here. And then tags, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually R code this one. That's why I find that interesting. Uh, or you can have a fields from, uh, you know, um, Facebook, but that's kind of weird. You can tag them as the ID of your, of your ad, but that could make things very, difficult to read. So I'm, you know, I'm just going to art code it here. Uh, and then I'm just going to type in um, custom and I'm going to type in uh, test add. So in the tag, I'm going to click custom and at the top here, it says enter text. So insert data, I'm going to art code it. So test And then the first name, because we asked for it, uh, well, we have the full name in our case. So we could have asked the first and last name will be much easier. So, you know, I'm not going to bother with this at this point. I don't really care too much about name, but I recommend that you ask for first and last name in your uh, Facebook ad because it's very easier to kind of segment them later, not road address. I'm not going to bother with this. The rest is fine uh, because I'm only asking for email and, and the name. Don't click continue. And now we can test the action. So what that means is that this is what's coming from Facebook, you know, and this is what's going to go in, uh, you know, audience. And then you see it's coming from Facebook and it's added. I have a double opt-in false, update yes, and then my tag, etc. So we're ready to test. So we'll click test and continue. Uh, test will be sent to our uh, MailChimp. So that means we can actually go and check in our MailChimp account. So I'll go right there and I'll just refresh my audience. So as we can see, uh, I'm now in my MailChimp list and you see my, my test email is right there with the tag. So it went through already. So now the only thing you got left to do, it's very simple. You turn on the zap like this. And by turning on, it means that every time, well, you see, I need to upgrade. So that's a premium app, but I would recommend you upgrade and you pay for it. Um, I'm going to click start a trial in my case. Um, oh, I need to do a payment. So I'm not going to do the payment at this point. So uh, 
<laughs> we'll cancel that. But anyway, you need to pay. And what that means is when the, the Zap is turned on, it means that anytime a new lead will come to Facebook, it'll go straight into your MailChimp. And um, if you if you go here in whenever the, the Zap is turned on, you'll be able to see essentially uh, the history, uh, view Zap history. So if you click on that, you'll see every lead that came in and it's very simple for you to debug if there's any problem of the sort. Uh, so you can go back in history and, and see what happens. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Um, I didn't go too much in details, but I thought I'll cover kind of the basic. There's so much more you can do with Zapier. I highly recommend that you check, check it out. Um, if you have ideas about connecting two things together, I'm pretty sure Zapier is there to uh, to, um, to fill that 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 request that you might have. Um, one thing I would say, kind of a disclaimer with Zapier, as as you scale up your ads, let's say you have a lot of leads, a lot of ads, a lot of 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 task. We 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 talk about task in Zapier. It's actually when something is processed. So if you have a lot of those, what might happen is that your bill will increase. So just be aware of that. So it could cost you a lot of money if 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 you're on a budget. Um, but at the beginning on a free plan, you have a couple of free tasks per month. So that should be enough if you have a very small campaign. All right. Thank you so much.